UW360 is proudly supported by Pacific Office Automation, Copy, Print, Workflow, and IT, Problem Solved. Today on UW360, the daily struggles of living with a spinal cord injury, how the University of Washington is working to improve the lives of hundreds of thousands of people who live and work in a chair. Plus, easing the anxiety of heading off to college with a special program for first-year students. And taking sustainability to a whole new level, how to turn a passion for caring for our world into a career. And what do all these women have in common? They're all UW computer science majors, and they're all living together for free. We'll explain. Plus, new coach, same awesome volleyball team, how Keegan Cook stepped into the shoes of a UW coaching great without missing a dig block or slam. Hello everyone, from the University of Washington, I'm Carolyn Douglas. Welcome to UW360. About a quarter million people in the U.S. live with spinal cord injuries, and there are thousands of new cases every year. Now, a group affiliated with the UW Department of Rehabilitation Medicine is trying to help newly injured people by tapping into the expertise of those who've used wheelchairs for decades. Stacy Sakamoto reports. My name is Clark, and I was injured 35 years ago in a diving accident um, in a river. This chair is designed... Clark for... Landis works for a company that provides wheelchairs. I'm a T5 paraplegic, and it was a result of a car accident in 1974. I was a high school senior and I rolled the Volkswagen Bug. And then once a quarter, we have... Bill Ferris is the chief financial officer of the University of Washington's IT division. I was in a car accident in high school. Um, 1982. Yeah, I'm 50. Did I say that out loud? Good boy. Oh, there we go. Elaine Stefanowitz is an academic advisor at a community college. As I ran into the water, I went into a dive, and there happened to be a big boulder in my way. I broke my neck at C4 or 5. And Joe Thayer works in the corporate world. They're now sharing their experiences in videos about what it's like to age with a spinal cord injury. The purpose of the videos is really to get um, first-hand accounts of people's experience with aging with spinal cord injury. Um, you know, the research really isn't there. Jeannie Hoffman is a professor in the UW Department of Rehabilitation Medicine and co-director of the Northwest Regional Spinal Cord Injury System. It's one thing to go and talk to your doctor and get their advice, but it's a whole different thing to have it kind of come from the source and come from really the, the personal experts of those who are in this position. And as I look towards aging, um, I'm very cognizant of, of wanting to remain independent. At the same time, there's gonna be a time where I will need more help. The four talk openly about health challenges and concerns now that they're in their 50s and 60s. When they were injured several decades ago, people with spinal cord injuries weren't expected to live long, let alone have successful careers. My era is the guinea pigs of this, because the docs, the therapists, everyone you talk to, they don't know exactly how we're gonna age either, because they didn't live this long. Aging and work, it's, it's been hard. Just um, the commuting and driving and a 35 minute drive to Auburn can take an hour and a half to two hours on Thursdays and Fridays, you know, both ways. You know, and that can be tough. And just sitting that much. I know I should be doing certain things to make it easier to age. I know this. I know I should be stretching my legs more than I do. I know that. Thayer works from home, in part, because getting in and out of his car and driving was hard on his body. The others agree the transfers from wheelchair to car seat require strength and coordination. All of them have injured their shoulders. So it's nice that you have... Hoffman is hoping their experiences will help others who are more recently injured. Thayer and Landis talk about a big transition. They now use power wheelchairs when they leave home. It was changing my identity, and I didn't like it. But both say the power chairs are a lot easier on their shoulders. I'm over being macho. Now it's just like, 
You're 53, dude. It's like, you need to just take care of yourself. They may be older, but they're a lot wiser. If you overuse your body or abuse it, it's gonna, it's gonna come back to haunt you. You just know it's gonna come. And if you can prepare for it, great. But you're gonna age whether you want to or not. In the 1970s, the average age of a patient at the time of a spinal cord injury was in their 20s. Now, the average age is in their early 40s. Still ahead on UW 360, we'll meet the new head coach of the UW women's volleyball team, who had some mighty big shoes to fill on Montlake. Plus, an amazing opportunity for several female UW students see how their choice to major in computer science landed them free housing and a program designed to make the move to college a little easier for incoming freshmen as UW 360 continues. Welcome back to UW 360. Heading off to college for the first time can be pretty overwhelming, but for thousands of new Huskies every year, it can also be a great bonding experience. They come to the University of Washington from all walks of life, from all around the state, the country, and the world. And now they can all enter the UW confidently, thanks to the orientation and grounding they receive from first year programs. Students come from near, from Seattle, Washington, and far. So I'm an international student from Saudi Arabia. And everywhere. Um, I transferred from Green River Community College in Auburn. I'm from a smaller suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm from Yakima, Washington. The UW is home to people from all walks of life. And while two thirds of UW students call Washington home, many contribute perspectives from across the country and world. And all of these students share one thing in common, the Husky experience. So when we talk about the Husky experience, it's an ethos. It's not something that you can define because really it's defined by each individual. It embodies this idea of connecting the dots to having a mindset of discovery. Leanne Jones-Wiles directs first year programs, which orients incoming students to study at the University of Washington and connects them to events, activities, and resources across campus. And sometimes getting oriented means just that. How does one make their way in such a big school? I kind of knew what to expect, but I had never been to the U.S. before until I came for university. I first saw campus two days before the quarter started. It always surprises me just how large the UW campus is. I never really knew the layout of the place, so it was really intimidating at first. Between moving from home, making major decisions, and something even as simple as navigating campus, coming to university is full of problems to solve and challenges to overcome. Every student is going to come and they're going to have a unique way that they're going to navigate the campus. It's about figuring out what are you interested in, what are your ideas, and what are you going to do with the next two to four years that you're here on our campus. Yeah, I would just say just go out and get involved in just something outside of your course, out, your courses outside of your intended major. Uh, you don't know exactly what you're going to be doing when you're coming into the campus. I have children and I wanted to make a stable life for them and not move them around a bunch. So it was a lot about stability and being in a place where you have solid faculty, they're well ranked and you know they're going to provide you with really stellar opportunities to move forward in your education. As far as finding a community, I was really lucky in that respect too because I think there is a little bit of this, I hold myself back from kind of engaging in these communities because I am a little bit older, but it really hasn't been the issue that I perceived it to be. One of the resources that First Year Programs offers is a FIG, a First Year Interest Group. It's a credit-bearing class offered to first quarter freshmen and transfers as a means to get a grip on college, led and designed by a peer instructor. I really wanted to join a FIG because I thought that it would be a great way to meet people and I also thought that it would be a good way to kind of like get introduced to being at a university, to being at college. So we want students, no matter where you're coming from, no matter where you're from, no matter what entry point you get to the University of Washington, when you leave and when you're here, you're a Husky. And that means something. 
First Year Program's website is filled with tons of help for incoming students. Here's that website info, and we also have it posted on our site at uwtv.org slash uw360. For students who are passionate about both succeeding in our world and caring for it, a career in sustainability can offer the perfect fit. And the UW is offering a helping hand by giving students a head start on their professional goals at the UW Sustainability Careers Meet and Greet. In a lot of ways, our society calls for it, uh, that in order to support as many people going forward and growing populations, that we really need to have an idea of what resource management will look like for future generations. Natalie Gray is in the right place at the right time. That's why I study environmental science and resource management. Like the dozens of other students at this UW Sustainability Careers Meet and Greet, she shares a passion for caring for our planet and a determination to use that passion to fuel a career. It's both personal, but it's also a very global thing. It's a responsibility to both your local and global identity. She's exactly the type of person whom Jacqueline Drumheller of Alaska Airlines is looking for. These are the kind of people who return the shopping cart at the grocery store. Do you know what I mean? And then don't throw things away or waste stuff. And they're not wasting money either. So, um, yeah, those are the kind of people we look for at Alaska Airlines, the people who return the shopping cart to the store. Maybe, maybe here... This event offered students critical face time with potential future employers and those future employers an opportunity to help guide the next generation. You know, we're change agents. We are changing the status quo. We are introducing new strategies to the company. And you have to be really motivated and really self-driven and, um, and not fearful. So I'll talk a little bit about my career and then talk a little bit of plug about what kinds of initiatives that we're working on at Alaska Airlines. And then Drumheller joined other industry leaders who were here to share their wisdom and passion with UW students from all types of backgrounds and fields of study to demonstrate how sustainability can be a part of any profession. Any job at any company can be a sustainability job. It really can. But there are more opportunities than, than ever before. And For Tom Watson with the King County Eco-Consumer Program, it's a labor of love. Working in the environmental field is important, and, and we need people that are passionate and, and will, will help change the world, will help address climate change globally, will help um, solve or address some of these environmental issues. It's everything that was ever owned by the university. The Careers Meet and Greet is part of the Sustainable UW Festival. We have um, an open house coming up soon where we're Which celebrates about. sustainability efforts at the University of Washington. What we found with our surveys is that the week-long festival highlights contributions and leadership efforts across campus. Spaces can get green certified. And provides opportunities for students, faculty, and staff to get involved. Like by attending the exhibitor fair in Red Square. Uh, general Earth Club meetings, they're open to the public. For some, the interest will grow beyond forging new connections at a festival. I met my husband at a hazardous waste disposal facility. <laughs> to finding a career that matches their environmental passions which is why the Careers Meet and Greet is one of UW Sustainability's most popular events, giving students valuable insight into a future job. It cemented my idea that there has to be an economic incentive for environmental change. An opportunity to blend passion with practicality. I was wondering if and for students like Natalie Gray, a precious jump start on their professional dreams. There is a lot that we've learned at UW that uh, can apply to the real world, and I'm excited to be able to um, really contribute my perspective to um, what is out there in the environmental realm. UW Sustainability offers all kinds of resources and events on campus throughout the year that encourage conservation and behavior change. To learn more about all the good work being done there, just head to the link on our website. Still ahead on UW360, an opportunity to not only learn computer science, but actually live it. Plus, how the mighty UW women's volleyball program keeps on rolling after replacing their legendary leader with another outstanding coach. UW360 continues. The following UW360 story is made possible by the generous support of BECU. BECU more than just money.
Welcome back to UW 360. College classes are tough enough, and then there's the question of where to live and eat. Enter a new program for college women in the demanding computer science program, a program that's designed to ease at least some of the pressure. My name is Meredith. I'm studying computer science at the University of Washington, and I live in the Toon House. Hi, I'm Karishma. I'm Aishu. I'm studying computer engineering. I'm studying computer science at the University of Washington, and we live in the Toon House. The Toon House opened its doors in September 2015. That's the day eight female UW students literally found a home. I walked into a room full of girls, <laughs> and they were all very nice and awesome, and I didn't know what I was in for for the rest of the year. So the Toon House scholarship itself covers, uh, it covers rent and it covers groceries. Um, we're also given computers to use. It also gives the women access to some pretty cool stuff like drones, apps, and other gadgets. They, uh, they have so much stuff at their place, it's just awesome, right? That just gives them like the creative spark, right? The idea for the Toon House came from marketing execs Lee and Lucas Brown. They went to Babson College in Massachusetts and lived in a dorm specifically designed for student entrepreneurs. The brothers co-founded the successful Seattle mobile marketing firm called Toon. Yeah, after a few years of work building uh, Toon here in Seattle, uh, we certainly began to more realize the um, gender diversity problem that we even had here at, at Toon. I think the issue of the gender gap in tech and the issue of not just gender but diversity in general, racial diversity, diversity of personalities, it's a big complicated issue. So we've certainly seen uh, how diversity can help create a, an awesome company and an awesome culture and uh, it's our, our ability to help lead those discussions. Today, this scholarship program is facilitating a space for discussion and a community to foster growth. One thing that we lacked in high school was having a strong community of girls in computer science or in general STEM. And at the Toon House, we have that sort of community here. Being able to meet like-minded people who are of a similar age and maybe a similar personality and you get along with really well and you feel like you can come to with problems and you can collaborate with, that's an incredibly powerful thing. They realized that there was the mentors give residents real world advice and the young women get to collaborate on creative projects outside of class. With my mentor, um, I'm working on a project and we're also pairing up with a couple of other girls in the house. We're working on building an app uh, for the house itself, actually. We're using the smartware technology to develop a device where we can see um, who the last roomie home is. Like, we call it last roomie home. We want our app to ping you, to remind you to lock the door if you're the last one home. But having a mentor who's actually been through it already is what's really keeping me sane and grounded and looking forward to the future. I think that they kind of went the extra mile uh, in terms of giving us a place to a place to grow and a place to develop ourselves as like confident women uh, in tech. This is just the beginning, and so it, it's a matter of providing a, a foundation and a framework in a community to inspire people to continue to to love technology and study it and want to be a part of it. Women interested in applying for Toon House can get more information at our website uwtv.org slash uw360. Still ahead, meet the mighty UW women's volleyball team, perennial powerhouse, former national champs, but now without their legendary coach. Meet the new young coach who took over from the master and never missed a beat as UW360 continues. Welcome back to UW360. The Husky volleyball program is one of the most successful in all college sports, due in part to longtime coach Jim McLaughlin. But after the 2015 season, the great coach left the program. Enter assistant coach Keegan Cook, who had some huge shoes to fill. So how'd he do? Aaron Mayofsky reports. Volleyball is Keegan Cook's life. Player, assistant, and now head coach. Today as the top dog, it's a whole new game. 
When it came time to make the decision on whether or not to apply, I had this deep sense of this is the right thing to do. So whether I thought I was ready or whether I had any other doubts, uh, they went away because I had a feeling that, yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. So all there is is one hitter who's hitting one ball, and you need to see her. Keegan's really good when he gives you your notes. Like, you'll see, like, stay middle, middle here, like, things that you can fix. But then there's a bunch of notes that are like, great job in this spot, great job making this move. So he's really positive and trying to get you to think more positive about yourself. If it's close, you go for it. If you don't know, you go for it. He's a good leader. He knows what he's doing. Much bigger scale than, than, than sand volleyball was. Um, sand volleyball, when I was the head coach, was more of an experimental sport. Um, and University of Washington Indoor Volleyball is uh, an established powerhouse, so uh, a little different. This year, Cook led the Huskies to a perfect 8-0 record in the sand. While Seattle might not be Surf City, Cook and his dogs definitely serving up the right recipe. I think that these women are the magic of this university and of this team, and uh, as much as they're in the spotlight, uh, I think it's a great thing because I know how hard they work, and uh, I think that they are the key to why we are who we are. Am I moving right? I know we kind of have a chip on our shoulder this year of having lost Krista and Kaylee and Jim, so everyone's kind of like written us off of like, well, they're just going to have an okay year, but I know we're all in here working really hard. If you don't know, you go and pull this. At just 30 years old and running a top program, Coach Cook is digging his new gig. I love Seattle. I love everything about this city. I had a weird sense that I was supposed to be in the Pacific Northwest for some reason, and then when I got to Seattle, I, I realized why. It's just uh, an incredible city and an incredible university, and yeah, I feel totally at home now. Cook was a college math major at St. Mary's. The Huskies finished their first season at 31-3 and under their new coach. Definitely a winning equation. And that does it for this edition of UW 360. If you'd like more information on any of the stories you saw today, just head to our website at uwtv.org slash uw360. You'll also find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Carolyn Douglas. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time with all new stories from the University of Washington.